Um, so I'm talking today about radical open historical map stuff, stuff that um, you will not see in open street map for a good reason. Events are a thing that we are bringing in. And um, it's sort of obviously unsuitable for, uh, for open street map, which is basically an accurate map of now when an event is something in the past. So what kinds of events are we talking about here? It could be event sites like Woodstock in uh, 1969. That's an event. It was on a site. There's geodata, and it is over. Um, routes of explorers, um, Magellan crossing the Pacific, troop movements and battles and campaigns are all things that happened and are over. So they make sense in OHM. They make no sense in OpenStreetMap. One of the arguments that's been had that's a legitimate argument is should we have a separate database for the event data outside of the cart cartographic data? And I can see the argument both ways. In the interests of mapping as opposed to arguing, because mapping is always better than arguing, we're just going to throw them into the database and if we decide that we need to pull them out and set a separate database up, we'll deal with it when the time comes. It must integrate with current OSM and Open Historic Map, open historic map Tagging Conventions. It must be easy to identify in case we need to extract it and move it. And we want to leverage wiki data to correlate with non-geo data. And I say this from experience. I played with using relations to represent complex historical structures. It was a loser. We're not doing that. <laughs> uh, not everything needs new or special tagging. There are temporary burials, for example, in the aftermath of a battle. Um, the Elliott burial maps, you just tag a cemetery and give it a start and an end date. This is a snippet from the Elliott burial map of the Antietam battlefield. It's a part that is uh, important to me for family reasons because my great-great-grandfather and great-great-grandmother um, lived in a farmhouse just north of the North Woods here at the time of the battle. So that's why I obsess with the Maryland Campaign of 1862. Um, troop movements, we need specific tagging for this. But we're going to have to create new tags. There's nothing in OSM that even remotely touches on this. Unit locations specified at times, but then units move. Well, we have the chronology relation that Min gave us uh, last year. So we can, in geometry, probably do ways to represent the troop positions and uh, then use chronology to group them together. And again, don't overdo it. We can link to Wikipedia, Wikidata, so let's do it that way. Um, this is an example of the kind of data available. This is the Cope Carmen map from 1908 showing the positions of the troops at daybreak. Um, and this is a series of maps at half hour to hour intervals showing the movement of the troops across the battlefield. So nodes and ways for geometry, start date and end date in ISO date time format. Um, if it's a single point in time, then you just put the same date and start date and end date, so we don't even need a new tag there. Um, then create a specific tag, event, military deployment equals line to say it's a line of troops heading to combat. Uh, the direction face get from the right hand rule off of the direction of the vector. Then column, it's marching in a column, so the, just the direction of the way. So it kind of looks like that, and this one I've actually added in Wikidata and Wikipedia for the 12th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment because they have their own items. Campaigns are a little different, not precisely the same. The units are larger. They're following roads. So we're looking at a change in level of description. The typical example of a campaign map. You see the uh, red lines for the Confederates and the blue lines for the Union, and we would be looking to replicate that road network. And I'm still developing this proposal, but we're talking about something like events, mill, march, include a route relation in the chronology relation to show the road march route between locations where we know where the troops were and start and ending dates. 
And that's where I'm going to stop because being on time is good. This is for Richard and just kind of a clarification, which I think is pretty obvious, but I just want to double check. With the adding the events into open historical map, and you mentioned having a tag that makes it easy to extract out, that is the one that just says event, correct? That's the current plan to use the event namespace, which obviously is irrelevant to OSM and is not likely to be used. But I, I just want to emphasize that if you do do that, make sure you put that tag in there then, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to bring well, that up. Well, in general, we don't ask. have an expectation of a rendering engine that would recognize event unless we write it. So, yeah, we, we have to have it for it to work. For open historical maps, um, when we get a list of all of the events that come in, what's the process for a user to go through and select those dates? Is it just a list of all of the available dates? Is there any other kind of user experience selection for finding what event in the list? Can you talk to me about how to select the output of those available dates? Well, um, that's basically um, one of the big challenges we're facing in OHM right now. It's not a thing that I really covered in the talk but we are all very aware in OHM that right now we have these big blank spaces and unless you know what you're looking for, it's hard to find stuff. And so this is maybe gonna be a surprise announcement here, but I have devised a radical plan to build a open search instance that's specifically designed to allow you to go hunting for events or any other entity in open historical map and bridge over to the Wikimedia Foundation complex to get at their articles. And this is part of my scheme for keeping the non-geo data out of open historical map is to leverage the fact that Wikipedia exists. I think that's sort of oblique relative to your question, but it's the thing we're trying to get at. 